GPU technology is forever changing and improving. Long gone are the days where you buy a product and well, that's it. The performance stays the same, with the improvements only coming by way of increasing frame rates through driver updates. Instead, now, products mature, not only through drivers, but through game patches and technologies being improved upon due to the way that GPU manufacturers are working ever closer with the game developers themselves. But the big question comes down to shelf life of a GPU. With a landscape that is forever changing, does it now mean that buying a GPU right now means it will be obsolete in just a few months time? Or with technology and performance maturing over time, does it now mean that your shiny new purchase is good for the next generation of games? Well, that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Now, you can probably see I've got some no 3 d cards here. And the reason why is they have sponsored this video, but they are one of the most popular graphics card brands on the market. And it's easy to see why, as they've maintained a great reputation throughout many generation of Nvidia graphics cards. And of course, they have an impressive range of 40 series super Nvidia RTX cards on the market, such as the RTX 4070 Super, 4070 Ti Super, and RTX 4080 Super, which we will be putting through their paces very shortly. Now, the Nvidia RTX 40 series cards have been with us for a little while now, but they're continuing to dominate the market. And it's fair to say that while AMD offers some strong competition right now, it's well known that Nvidia cards are a couple of generations ahead with some of their key technologies, which has left the green team as a premium choice for gaming and graphics enthusiasts. Now, some of you out there may be waiting for the next generation of graphics cards, but we think you may be waiting quite a while, mostly likely into 2025. And we do actually have another video diving into that, so be sure to check that one out. For now though, the 40 series supercards are here to stay for quite some time yet. And while the old mentality of more cores was the key performance metric, that's definitely started to change in recent years with the architecture and how performance in game doesn't just relate to more cores means more performance. There's, I guess, so much more to it than that collectively that builds a much bigger picture. I mean, only a few years ago, a new card would be a certain percentage faster than the last one when we're talking pure rasterization. And well, that was pretty much the end of it. But in 2024 and beyond, we now have the combination of more CUDA cores, updated tensor cores, and the latest generation of RT cores, all of which accelerate the cards in different ways and largely benefit from new software updates more than previous generation of cards well, ever did. Now, a simple driver update, new API, or a game patch can do more than just improve stability and performance in a game. Now, instead, it can actually bring in new technologies and improve technologies that leverage the RTX 40 Super Series hardware in new ways. That, I guess, such as what we've seen with continued development of ray tracing and path tracing, and with resolution scaling technologies such as DLSS, which has continued to grow from its first iteration to version 3.7.10. And we see no reason why that won't grow to DLSS 4 and beyond in the not too distant future, bringing with it refinements and improvements, not only to performance, but to visual quality as well, which is, after all, the most important thing, especially as games become more realistic and push the boundaries. Now, for competitive gaming, technologies such as Reflex have become essential for gamers at home and on a professional level, ensuring that they get the absolute lowest possible latency from their gaming hardware. High FPS is great for certain types of gaming, and the 40 series supercards certainly have well, no issues with generating big frame rates, but with Reflex and Reflex Boost, it keeps your GPU in a more readied state at all times. For games like Counter-Strike 2, you'd be mad not to have it enabled at all times to maintain that performance edge because it can really make the difference between well, getting that kill or getting killed. And with so many young people now aspiring to be professional streamers or esports gamers, the stakes are now even higher than they've ever been. For a lot of gamers, however, the best value comes from technologies in terms of the visuals, such as ray tracing or the more advanced element of path tracing technologies. This is seen realistic lighting, shadows, and reflections added to, I guess, a wide range of games, taking the visuals to the next level and becoming ultra realistic. Just going back a couple of years to Battlefield 5, where we had RTX reflections with a single ray bounce, and for that time, it looked impressive, but the performance impact was pretty significant at the time. But as I mentioned, things have matured in terms of software and technologies, and the list of supported games has continued to grow, with ray tracing now offering multiple effects at a time, with more ray bounces than ever, and massively improved performance thanks to the improved Tensor and RT cores of the latest cards, and also the continued development of the RTX API. 
Plus, with new technologies such as ray reconstruction, DLSS scaling, and DLSS3 frame generation, you often find that the overall FPS goes up with all these new technologies enabled, which obviously means that you get much more visual fidelity. You're getting better quality graphics without the huge performance hit. Now, NVIDIA has continued to unleash new developments for ray tracing, DLSS, and more over the last few years. And well, there's no sign that they're slowing down anytime soon. But as I said, if you are rocking your new NO 3 d graphics card, you're more in a position now to get these technologies with a simple software update, rather than having to wait for the next generation of hardware, as was often the case with previous generations of cards. I guess gaming aside, even more so for content creators, like ourselves, which is something in O3D have actually demonstrated a lot on recently, there's technologies like RTX Studio, the addition of AV1 video encoding for game streaming, chat RTX and broadcast, giving content creators real-time AI-powered features to take their streaming or editing to the next level. Now, there are some other AI features such as RTX Ace, and well, I think we're going to see games implementing that very, very soon. And what that basically means is that we're gonna see real-time voice chat with in-game characters for the very first time. And you know what? I can't wait to play around with that some kind of more in the near future. I did so at Computex, but I just wanna get my hands on it a little bit more. And it just goes to show that there's still plenty of exciting things that can be done with these developing technologies without having to buy a new product every time it launches. Now, of course, the best thing about any Inno 3D Super Graphics card is going to be gaming. And there are some amazing games out right now and also some big ones on the horizon that can take full advantage of the cards and their ever-growing and ever-improving features. Now, Counter-Strike 2 technically is a new game. It's obviously a reskinned, revamped version of Counter-Strike, but you could class it as a new game. Now, this can already benefit from NVIDIA Reflex and DLSS to give you massive frame rates and ultra-low latency to help push your gaming experience and hopefully also push your KD ratios to the next level. Then there's games like Fortnite and Lego Fortnite, which continue to be at the forefront of graphics technologies with extensive integration of ray tracing, performance enhancements via DLSS, and well, it's usually one of the first games to jump on any new technology from NVIDIA. So I can't wait to see what comes next in terms of DLSS and ray tracing advancements in that. I personally don't play the game myself, but I can appreciate, I guess, the, the technologies and the benefits that you actually get from it. Now, talking about upcoming games, we have Black Myth Wukong and Star Wars Outlaws, and they are the next big launches, with both games sporting the latest innovations in DLSS and ray tracing, which is gonna be great news for an RTX 40 Super Series gamer, as you're gonna be able to take full advantage of what they have to offer from day one. And again, as the technology matures, you're only going to see widespread improvements all round. So the whole point of this video, can these cards handle these upcoming games and that? I think it's a pretty resounding yes. Now, when it comes to performance, it's fair to say that none of the RTX 40 series supercards are slow. With the RTX 4070 Super offering blistering fast performance for those wanting to play at higher resolutions and higher refresh rates for under $600 in the US, or £600 here in the UK. Then, moving up the stack, we've got the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is obviously faster, and a little more expensive at around $800 or £800, but you get a lot more cores, more VRAM, and often a larger cooler too, giving you even better performance for high resolution gaming, which is now becoming more and more popular. Of course, if you want the uh, best of the best and wanting to game on some of the new uh, ultra high refresh rate monitors or at 4K, or perhaps both at the same time, then you're gonna wanna look at the RTX 4080 Super Series, which features a whopping 10,240 CUDA cores compared to the 8,448 cores of the 4070 Ti Super, giving you a massive raw performance boost that's gonna be great for playing, well, frankly, any game you like. Inno also have a, a bit of a trick up their sleeve with the 4080 Super, as compared to the competition, their card only takes up two slots inside your case, making it perfect for those who want a slightly smaller form factor case. Well, most cards of this caliber at least will end up taking three, three and a half, sometimes even four slots up in your case. So this just makes it more accessible, I guess. Now, the most important aspect is that regardless of which card you choose, they all share a lot of the same common DNA. They all support the latest RTX technologies, such as reflex, ray tracing, path tracing, DLSS, and then further technologies such as RTX Studio. With the continued support from NVIDIA to push these technologies to the next level, the value and the performance of these cards has done nothing but go up. 
and we see no reason why that trend won't continue all the way beyond the eventual release of the 50 series cards, which, no, I don't have a concrete date now, but it is looking likely that it's going to be 2025. So the big question is, how do things compare with these cards? It's all well and good me talking about getting extra performance and spouting out a bunch of buzzwords, but the proof is in the pudding. While some of the games we mentioned aren't out as of yet, there are still some pretty intensive games on the market that are already pushing the boundaries of what's capable, like Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, which can harness ray tracing at varying levels and DLSS to give you that extra boost in performance. So let's compare what that means for you when using these cards to get the very best performance simply by flicking a switch in the game settings. And again, that's kind of the whole point of this video. We want to see if these cards can handle these upcoming games. And with Cyberpunk and Alan Wake 2 really sort of giving us, I guess, next level generation of graphics anyway, well, it shouldn't be too dissimilar in those games compared to these new games coming up. Now to test, we used our GPU test bench consisting of an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D sitting in a Gigabyte B650E Aorus Master with 32 gig of Corsair Vengeance RGB 6000 MHz CL30 dual channel memory. All testing was done on Windows 11 with the latest update supplied and with the latest BIOS revision for the motherboard we used, and of course the latest GPU drivers. We'll be looking at 1440p and 4K today, and we will look at what kind of uplift you actually get when enabling DLSS to see what kind of gains we're able to get. By doing so, it means that we can crank all of the settings pretty much to their max to get the best visual fidelity, the best looking graphics, and just the most immersive gameplay while also getting some amazing performance. So let's jump into it. So starting things off with Alan Wake 2 at 4K, and we're able to see the benefits of upscaling, and more importantly, with frame generation enabled. Taking the 4070 Ti Super, for instance, which came in at 45 FPS average, we saw a 58% drop in performance when enabling ray tracing, which obviously makes it unplayable at 19 frames per second. When enabling DLSS and turning ray tracing off, we ended up boosting the performance up to 91 FPS, which is a very impressive 102% improvement over the stock settings. Again, enabling ray tracing, but keeping upscaling turned on does see a drop in performance to 49 frames per second, but this is still a 158% improvement from the 19 FPS that we saw earlier, and is now a playable experience with enhanced visuals. The key one here though is frame generation, which nets us 111 frames per second, which means we're now getting 147% more performance with increased visual fidelity, lighting effects and shadows, and just generally making the game look better, while also improving the smoothness of the gameplay at the same time. The RTX 4070 Super and 4080 Super see similar gains when adjusting and moving between the various settings and enabling different upscaling technology. Then moving on to Cyberpunk and at 4K, if we turn our focus to the RTX 4080 Super, this comes in at 51 FPS on stock ultra settings. When we enable ray tracing, the quality of the image is severely improved with a more immersive gameplay experience, but performance suffers as a result, now down to 29 FPS, which is a 43% deduction in frame rate. To get some performance back, again, enabling DLSS upscaling takes our performance up a notch to the tune of 162% over the ray trace results, or 49% up from our initial stock results, and is now well above the magical 60 FPS threshold that most gamers crave. If however you want even more performance, frame gen again comes to the rescue and propels performance up to 106 frames per second. Then as we look at the 4070 Super and 4070 Ti Super, we can see the same trend, with ray tracing dropping performance, but DLSS coming to the rescue and propelling performance to new heights, while also giving us those shiny visuals from enabling ray tracing. Hogwarts Legacy is next up and focusing on the 4080 Super because it tops our charts with upscaling and frame generation at 131 frames per second, which is a big shift from the 65 FPS we saw with no upscaling at all. While the performance is great, we're all about the balance of performance and visuals. And with that in mind, enabling ray tracing along with keeping upscaling and frame generation on only sees performance drop by 27%, now at 95 FPS, which for a game of this type is more than enough performance as it's not a competitive game and anything above 60 would pretty much feel the same. Finally, looking at Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide and looking at the 4070 Super because it still gives us really respectable numbers when we enable upscaling. As you can see in the chart, stock performance came in at 44 FPS, which is a bit lower compared to what we'd want from a card. But remember, we're at 4K and this is a 4070 Super. 
Enabling ray tracing obviously sees a hit in performance of 34%, dropping us down to 29 frames per second. But enabling upscaling sees that performance jump to 54 FPS, which is a 86% improvement, and puts it 23% ahead of its original result, which is a nice little jump considering the extra visuals in terms of quality that we now get. Then as we enable frame gen, the performance propels to 76 FPS, which again, based on this type of title, is an impressive jump, which now puts it above the 4080 Super's performance at stock by 19%, and also well above AMD's flagship 7900 XTX by 23%. So I think it's pretty clear to see that ray tracing gives a performance hit. We all know that, and it's not really a surprise to anyone, but DLSS upscaling really helps to bring performance much more in line with what's playable. And then via the voodoo magic that is frame generation, that performance just keeps on going. Now, whether it's a 4070 Super, 4070 Ti Super, or 4080 Super, the numbers are pretty crazy in terms of what's able to be achieved. When I spoke about technologies, this really is at the heart of it. The GPU in terms of rasterization hasn't suddenly found unknown areas of performance, but instead is working in conjunction with the ray tracing cores and the tensor cores to give us stronger visuals and more immersive sensation in game and keeping our frame rates high. So it really is a win-win. And if you're wondering why we didn't focus on 1440p, then the reasons are actually quite simple. We started to do our testing and discovered that even on the lower end 4070 Super, the performance was still well above what would be marketed as playable. So if you're after 1440p data, you'll be pleased to know that it will be, well, higher. What's clear to see is that through refinements in the tech that sits within the GPU, improved visuals are a possibility. And unlike the Battlefield 5 days where you had a choice of fancy visuals and lower performance, Nvidia have tweaked upscaling tech to new levels that now we get better than what we did before in terms of visuals, but also now with new heights in terms of performance. So again, I chalk that up as a win-win situation. With that in mind, it's no wonder that the competition are rumored to be dropping from the high end because if Nvidia have mainstream mid-rangey kind of products that can perform like a high-end GPU can, how do you compete with that? Put simply, you can't. And based on how things have matured so far and how they will in the future, things are only going to get better. And if you're looking to play some of these new upcoming titles, I think we've shown today that, well, you'll have no problem with any of them if you're rocking a 40 Super Series GPU from Inno3D and Nvidia. For now, that's gonna wrap things up for this one. If you enjoyed the video, then a like and a subscribe to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then consider joining the super special Patreon members club. You'll help support the channel like you wouldn't believe, and you'll get a ton of cool benefits, including exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, access to our testing data, and much, much more. The link for all that great stuff is down below. Thanks for tuning in, I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye-bye.